What's up guys, Tim Little. Welcome back to Tactical Bassin. Today's video, we are talking about my top five baits for the month of January. The month of January, we are talking cold fishing conditions, but you can still catch them on reactions. So today's video, I got my top five baits that Matt and I, uh, we have a ton of confidence in, caught double digits on most of these baits, all except for one actually. Um, but January, again, if you fish December, January is just gonna be a little bit colder, but you already have those fish dialed. You know where they're at, where their winter haunts at, where they're, where they're wintering, and uh, now you can dial them in with these baits. But um, layer up, it's freezing outside. It is winter time through and through, no matter where you are in the country, unless you're in the far, far south of Texas or Florida, but it is cold. But today's video, top five baits for the month of January. Let's get started. Number one for me is going to be the Alabama rig, either bladed or non-bladed. Typically, if I'm fishing clear water, now a lot of times this time of the year, your fisheries get really, really clear. That cold water just really uh, clears up. So you don't necessarily need blades, but uh, typically I will start off with blades. This is the Tactical Flex rig. Uh, it's, we partnered up with a Hog Farmer to design this rig to have lighter wires, still really strong. You're not gonna break them, but they have the flex in them. So when you add your reel twitches or your rod twitches, this thing is made to mimic a school of shad, a school of bait fish, and having that whole school kind of come in and then expand uh, nine times out of 10, right after you add those twitches, that's when you're going to get bit. But we added, as of late, the new Tactical Flex Mini Rig. We got 2.8s on here, 3.8s. I actually have a 4.8, <laughs> even got a fish scale on there for you. We've caught some giants on this rig already. You can see it's quite a bit smaller, more compact than the Tactical Flex rig. The reason we designed this is because just like everything, um, you gotta downsize sometimes with more fishing pressure, with clearer water. You know, fish get used to maybe an eight inch bait. Now you gotta throw a 10 inch bait or a six inch bait. You know, fish come, uh, they get used to certain baits. So we wanted to add an option, still stuck with the flex rig. So lighter wire, flexible. Uh, this rig is built to throw, I mean, you can throw 2.8 Kitex on it, but it really shines with your three threes, your three eights, um, or your 4.3 Kitex. This is actually a 4.8. Uh, a little trick for you guys. I have eighth ounce heads on the side and I have a half ounce in the middle. I was fishing this specific rig down deep, 30, 40 feet, uh, just keeping it on bottom. If you add your heaviest head to the rear of the bait, it keeps it down. And more importantly, when you cast, you don't have the heavy weights on the outside to condense and foul your bait. So you won't get fouled up as much. But this guy right here, this is the uh, mini flex bladed. We have it in non-bladed as well. So if you find yourself in a situation where you need to throw a rig with smaller baits, maybe a three inch Largo shad or a 3.3 Kitek, even 2.8s, uh, that is the rig for you. But an Alabama rig, these fish are looking to feed up. You can see that I have that heavier head rigged because I'm fishing it down deep. I'm still just creeping it, just like I would a, a swim bait. Just creeping it every six or seven handle turns. Do a twitch, twitch, get that school moving. Uh, but that is my number one bait. It's gonna be my number one bait all the way through spring, basically, until we get into glide bait season and on all that good stuff. But the Alabama rig, check your local regulations. You know, uh, some states you can have three baits with hooks, some states you can have all five with hooks. Uh, totally depends on the state you're in. Make sure you check your regulations. <laughs> totally cool that I still have a fish scale on that one right there. But that is my number one. Number two, you guys know that we love speed cranking in the winter. If you haven't already, we'll link the videos down below. But you guys know that we have caught giants this time of the year fishing a crankbait, speed cranking, fishing it as fast as you can on a seven to one, eight to one gear ratio reel, 
but just deflecting off of cover uh, and those fish are coming and hunting and chasing that bait down as fast as you can turn the handle and it goes against everything you thought you knew about cold water bass fishing but a lot of times this time of the year all the way through the cold weather months you can catch giants speed crank it so as far as you know matt did a, a great video on this a few weeks back a couple videos ago uh talking about the whole system if you will that we use depending on uh, the depth depending on um, the type of stuff we're fishing number one tactical dd crank you guys know we designed this a few years ago uh, biggest bass today that we know of on it's 13. We've caught several tens, 12. I mean, we've caught some giants on it, but that's the tactical DD crank. Uh, that is our go to. We designed it to hit the depths that we want, we designed it with the sound that we wanted, uh, and the action. It's really important. You can't take your favorite, I mean, you can, but you're not going to have as much success. Uh, there's a lot of great great summertime crankbaits, deep diving crankbaits on the market, but well, this time make you want something with a real tight, action real tight wobble you want to be able to move it quickly and make those fish react so that's how we designed that that's that tactical dd crank number two mega bass deep six another great beautiful crankbait real big lip this is going to be the deepest of the system of the crankbaits we use for cold water cranking that deep six is a must and then if you're a guy that's a little bit shallower fish and rock that spro rock crawl rock crawler the thing deflects really really well it's a wider bait but again it works phenomenally well in cold weather so a crankbait so we got the a rig and the crank number three is going to be some kind of swim bait either huddleston or the savage gear uh, you guys know if you followed us for years you guys know that we grew up throwing big swim baits you know big huddlestons big magnums uh now the hog hunter, big glide baits. We've always thrown big baits out on the West Coast. They shine right now. You're fishing them on bottom, you're creeping them. Again, you're barely turning that handle. But right now, those fish, unless you can trigger them, unless you can key in into their predatory instincts and get like the, the crankbait to deflect and have them chase or the A-rig to kind of pulse and have them want to eat the school of fish, for the most part, they're just sitting down there and they're looking for an easy, big meal. So that is why I throw some kind of larger swim bait. Hopefully that's focusing on the swim baits for you guys. But if you're a guy that doesn't have the confidence or the gear to throw a big eight inch or 10 inch swim bait, downsize, throw a Kitek, throw a little 2.8 if, if need be, throw something on a spinning rod. The downside is, the upside is you're gonna catch more fish. The downside is these guys right here, you're targeting the biggest fish in the lake. The A-rig, the crankbait, the big swim baits, you are going after your new PB possibly, but you're targeting the biggest fish in the lake. They're looking for a big, easy meal. So the downside to throwing the small guy versus the big guy is a 10 pound bass is gonna swim a lot farther to eat this guy than he would this guy. Of course, you hit him in the face, he's gonna eat it, but they will swim a lot farther. Drawing power, that's what it's all about. Again, you're just barely creeping this thing on bottom. You're throwing a heavy sink, a fast sink, so something in like an ROF 12. You want that, that chin of that bait just down there, just, just dragging. Again, you're going with a swim bait that has a, uh, a vortex tail on it, something that, uh, that, that kind of goes away from the boot tail. That's more of an aggressive kicking bait. You just want something that's real subtle just just barely moving as you're creeping this thing along again if you don't have the gear or you don't have the confidence go with a 4.8 a 4.3 all the way down to a 2.8 you will catch fish so that's why it's number three in my list because throwing a swim bait will produce lots of fish catches right now now changing complete gears let's talk finesse if you're a guy that doesn't want to throw an a-rig or you don't want to be burning a crankbait, throwing a swim bait. The benefit of fishing fast this this time of the year keeps you warm. You know, you don't you don't think about how cold it is when you're burn 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 pause. Burn 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 pause. You're burning calories, you're warmed up, you're moving. Uh, when you start just creeping the swim bait or 
Dragon, a Ned rig. We'll talk about that guy here in just a second. You start thinking about, man, it's really cold out. I probably should have worn some better gloves, probably should have worn some better, better socks. Um, your mind can kind of travel a little bit, but when you're, when you're down there burning, hitting the bottom, deflecting, being real aggressive, it kind of keeps your mind focused on what you're doing. So that is one plus to actually doing the reaction fishing this time of the year. So switching gears, if you've tried all that and you can't, st you still can't get bit. I did a video a couple weeks ago talking about, a week or so ago, talking about uh, finesse tips. You know, some finesse tips to help you catch more bass this time of the year. Uh, and then Matt followed that up with a reaction, a great reaction video talking about these, a lot of these baits, A-rig, crankbait, swimbait. Um, but if you're a guy that's in a tournament situation and they're not eating the swim bait, they're not eating the A-rig and you have to produce fish, uh, I have two finesse baits for you. And it's kind of hard to narrow this down to five because this time of the year I typically have like seven or eight different techniques. I'll have a couple different styles of jigs. I'll have a drop shot or a, a jerk bait or, you know, I have different stuff. But these five are my most confidence baits that I know that you guys can catch fish no matter where you are in the country. So number four, I'm going with a football jig. Five eighths, three quarter ounce football jig paired up with a twin tail grub. Uh, this is a fish catcher. You can fish it deep anywhere from 15 to 40, 50 feet of water with that big head on it, a football head, three quarter ounce, five eighths ounce. It's heavy. You're going to have a lot of bottom contact. You're going to feel what's going on down there. And a lot of times this time of the year, the fish just pick up the bait. They don't smack it like they would in warmer months. They just pick it up and they start to swim off with it. You're going to feel that little bit of of weight in your rod tip, you're gonna reel down and jack them. Uh, bring them up slowly. A lot of times this time of the year when those fish are down deep, don't just wrench them right to the top because right to the surface, uh, it'll mess with their air bladder and you'll have a hard time getting them, releasing them, letting them go back down. So take your time. These fish are typically lethargic. Even though they're chasing down the, the, the fast baits, when you hook them, they don't fight nearly as hard as if you caught them in the spring or in the fall. So just uh, remember that. If you catch them deep, bring them up slow, but a three quarter ounce or a five eighths ounce, heavier, half ounce or heavier football jig is my number four. Now, last but not least, trying to um, pick one more finesse bait uh, to add to the lineup to make the top five. I went with a Ned rig. It was kind of toss up between this and the drop shot, but I feel like bottom contact bait uh, you have more feel with the Ned over the drop shot. A lot of times these fish are glued to the bottom, especially if you're in ultra clear water or ultra cold water. Uh, so I went with the Ned rig. You can see right here, I have a football style head uh, on that Ned rig. Again, you're fishing around and through rock this time of the year. If you're fishing a main lake point, a secondary point, uh, you wanna be fishing around rock. That is gonna hold all, most of the fish. As we come off of fall and that grass dies down, those fish pull to hard cover. That rock, if you can find an awesome rock pile on a secondary or a main lake point, that's going to be key. But that little football head right there will help you fish that rock pile more effectively and not get hung up as much as possible. Well, it is starting to rain. It is cold out. It'll probably start snowing. I'm gonna wrap it up there, guys. But that is my top five baits for the month of January. If you're a reaction fishing, throw that A-rig, throw that new mini flex rig. You guys are really like that. Uh, the fish haven't seen a little compact rig uh, very often or very much. That speed crank, one of those three baits, the tactical crank, the deep X or the rock crawler, and then a swim bait. Either a 2.8 all the way up to an eight inch swim bait. You guys will catch fish. And if you're a true finesse guy, go with that jig, go with that Ned rig. And that wraps up my top five baits for the month of January. As always, guys, we appreciate the support. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please hit that like button. Remember to subscribe. If you haven't already, turn on that bell for notifications. If you have any questions, please leave those down below in the comment section. And we will see you guys on the next video.